understandable and all perfectly rational. However, there are many in Europe who do consider their own situation as being uh, right on the brink. The, the situation right now, even after this apparent agreement between the leaders of Europe uh, on how to save Greece uh, and stabilize their economies, there are still some who say that this is, this is a matter of postponing the crisis point for merely a matter of months. Uh, if there isn't some sort of much stronger commitment, for instance from the Chinese, then we really are at the point of disaster. So while I take on board all the rational perspectives you've brought here, there is going to come a point where a decision has to be made and soon. And I know that you're not speaking on behalf of the Chinese government, but the question that everybody wants an answer to is, is China going to step in and play that role? Uh, during my recent trip uh, to Europe, uh, to North America, I kept you know, conveying the consistent message. First of all, we in China are very much supportive of Eurozone, of Europe, and of Euro. We in China, we in CIC, are actively looking for investment opportunities, which would be good for both sides. And uh, thirdly, we are upbeat about Europe, but in the first instance, Europe must be a bit about itself. There's a whole range of reform measures which have to be done without further delay. Having 17 parliaments and governments will not give Eurozone members any excuse of not taking any actions. And this is the message. Because I think if you look at the uh, troubles in, uh, which happened in European countries, this is purely because of the accumulated troubles of the worn out welfare society. I think the labor laws are outdated. The labor laws induce sloth, indolence, rather than hard working. The incentive system is totally out of whack. You mean welfare? Of, of course. So why should, for instance, within Eurozone, why should some members people have to work until 65, even longer. Whereas in some other countries, they happily retire at 55, languishing on the beach. You know, this is unfair. You, you, are, you are speaking in many ways like, a, like a, one of the extreme capitalists of, of, of the United States. L let me, are, you, are, are you suggesting that hardline capitalist approach is where Europe should be going? Huh? You know, the welfare system is good for any society to reduce the gap to help those who happen to be disadvantages to enjoy their life. But welfare society should not induce people not to work hard. So if you look at the European countries, you know, history over, over the last five or six decades, you'll find this system would have to be adjusted. I'm sure the Germans would take issue with that, <laughs> the economic terms. I mean, well, what is it about the European system that China has decided not to follow? What are, what are the pitfalls that have beset Europe that China thinks it should stay away from? I think what is most important is to have very appropriate incentive system. We should not follow some of the bad examples of, the, of these kind of so-called welfare societies in which hard working is not encouraged. Now, if people who don't work would make as much as those who work hard, of course, this is invitation to indolence. This is not what we don't, what we want to see. This is not what we want to see. You know. So I think coming back to this issue, uh, my my uh, idea is that as long as the eurozone members would fix some of the economic social problems, they have as long as they have a very credible convincing work on a program, the outside world would have confidence and responsible investors would come, stay there and uh, put money in some of the vital sectors to help to revive the economy. So this, this is very clear. So in the first instance, I hope the 17 parliaments in Eurozone members would work out a convincing, credible program.